Welcome everyone out to Fairview Park Hospital here with Dr. Jasper, head of ER here. And you do so much for our community. We've spoken with you before about events. And we just want to talk right now, ladies and gentlemen, about an issue that we all need to be careful about. That's heat stroke. Uh, we started into a beautiful spring. It was nice and cool. It rained a lot. People got out and did a, a lot of things. But all of a sudden, summertime hits just as it does in South Georgia every year. And, and all of a sudden your body has to adjust. And, and many of us uh, like to get outside and like to do things and um, might not uh, work outside every day or might not exercise every day. And so heat stroke something we need to be very cautious of, don't we, Doc? Yes, sir. Um, so the biggest point about any heat-related illness, the number one thing is it's preventable. And so I like to always start with stressing that this is a preventable problem. So all you have to do is really be smart. Everyone wants to get outdoors. We want to enjoy the summer. We love our summers. We've been inside for months and bundled in our coats. And now the sun is shining. We want to get into our nice outfits. But the big thing is any heat-related illness is preventable. It just requires you to do some simple things and then to also make sure you pay attention to what your body is telling you. So... As you can understand, heat-related illness is really a continuum. And if you understand the first signs, you'll recognize when things are worse and you know when you need to get to the doctor and seek medical attention. Okay. So I like to always start off with the beginning. So some of the simple things that happen. So we, we all recognize when we're thirsty. Um, a lot of people will ignore that because they are trying to accomplish a task. Yeah. They, oh, I have to get the yard done, mm -hmm. or I'm trying to finish this, you know, run that I'm doing. But your body is telling you when you're thirsty, drink. The, the myths of if I drink, I'm going to cramp, I won't be able to, you know, do what I need to do. Those have all been dispelled. When your body wants you to drink, that's telling you take the time, drink, hydrate. If you know you're going to be outside for a while, for any extended period of time, doing a, a rigorous, you know, activity, drink in advance. Oftentimes, we start off our day dehydrated or underhydrated, and so the heat makes it worse. So I then tell people the other signs. So simple things. Um, you can get what's first called a heat rash. So you may notice that on your neck or your chest mm -hmm. that you get these little bumps. They'll look like pimples. And you wonder, oh, I must have touched something. And it may indeed just be the heat. That's usually a hint for you to get out of the heat, go okay. to a cooler location, yeah. make sure you're going to take care of that. Then we know you, you advance usually to sunburn. So um, the myth about sunburn is... The, the clouds are in the sky, I can't burn. Mm. The clouds do not stop you from getting that UV light that causes sunburn. So wear a protective screen. It, typically it takes probably less than 10 minutes of direct sun to actually start burning. Mm. So that's another myth. People are like, well, I'm only going to be out for a few minutes. So sunburn, if you start noticing your, your skin is burning, it's turning red, you may even start to blister, another sign you need to get out of the heat, you need to cool off. Um, and then if we usually advance after that to where people are having what we call heat cramps. So people will start to notice they could be cramping in their hands, like their fingers, their toes. You may get yeah. cramping in bigger muscle groups. Mm -hmm. Big warning, get out of the heat, rehydrate. Things like, you know, your sports drinks may help because they will replenish some of your electrolytes mm -hmm. and you're going to want to drink water and rehydrate. At that point, when you have heat cramps, you should not continue with any activity until you are no longer cramping. A lot of times that may mean you're going to have to finish it tomorrow. So you can't work through it. Correct. This is not the time you want to work through it. So then the, if we advance to what's called heat exhaustion. So at heat exhaustion, you may start to get nauseated. You may actually start vomiting. Um, you use it will feel really weak, exhausted, tired. Um, you may start to get some dizziness or lightheadedness. This is now a really big warning sign for you because if you're at the point of heat exhaustion, you usually will require some kind of medical intervention to really recover more quickly. Mm. Um, heat exhaustion may take, instead of with heat cramps, you may take you know hours to, to replenish those electrolytes. You may take the day off, but you felt fine. With heat exhaustion, it may take a day 
or two just to recover. Mm -hmm. And then we advance beyond that, um, which is heat stroke. And heat stroke will have the same symptoms as heat exhaustion, except you may have, you know, altered mental status, confusion. You may not be able to get the person to make sense to you. Um, there is one big thing, and I have to tell people, if you get to the point where you have heat stroke, you are now at a point where you do not want to encourage someone to drink. And it's primarily because they may be confused, they may vomit, and they may actually choke or aspirate on what you give them. So when you get to the point of heat stroke, the real answer is get to us as soon as you can or your nearest emergency department. Those are 911 calls unless you can safely arrive um, you know, by car, but we do recommend you seek medical attention and you do it emergently because it often requires us to give IV, you know, fluids mm -hmm. and, you know, hospitalization. Mm -hmm. um, people don't realize that when you suffer from heat-related illness, it's more than just what you feel is wrong. You can actually have damage to organ systems, to your kidneys and brain. So mm -hmm. it's really important. So when you get to that point, uh, many people say, okay, you stop sweating. When you realize that you stop sweating, that's a sign. Mm -hmm. is, is so that so, true? so let's, let's talk about that. So mm -hmm. in, initially your body will sweat to try to cool itself off. So you can actually advance into you know, sort of heat cramps and still feel really cool, clammy type of skin. Mm. Um, you still can make probably, you know, you're making sweat. In fact, the fact that you lost so much sweat is what's going to often lead to the heat cramps. Mm. When you start to go towards heat exhaustion and heat stroke, we start losing, the body loses its ability to keep up and to have that sweat um, production to cool you off. And so I mentioned the symptoms of heat exhaustion advancing into heat stroke, oftentimes the real hallmark for heat stroke is also your body's temperature. person who advances to heat stroke will often have a fever, and that's because their body lost the ability to make the sweat to, to cool and evaporate. Mm -hmm. So now you, you have nothing left. You end up with a temperature, you're confused, and of course all of the other symptoms that I mentioned. Yeah, and, and so there are older methods that have been tried, and so tell us if it's a good idea uh, to to wet them with a water hose if they're outside. To well, well, external cooling is always a good thing. Okay. So a, a lot of times, now the person with sunburn may not like you wetting them with that yeah. water hose, but in all cases, cool towels. Um, any kind of external cooling device. We have we see all these fancy sports things now that you can yeah. you can cool. They work. Yeah. They they may cost and but the old fashioned stuff does still work too. You have cool towels, cool washcloths, and remember your body's temperature is a lot warmer than what the rim temperature will typically be. So we've done one thing. We've gotten them out of the out of the environment, we got them into a cooler place. Mm -hmm. So now everything that you use at that point would be room temperature. Hopefully in your house, it's not 85 or 90 degrees. So it's gonna be you know, nice and cool to your body and yeah. that does work. All right, so what parts of the body, the neck, the head? Um, interestingly, you lose a lot of your body temperature, your head, the armpits, the hands, the feet. So I always recommend if you want to cool somebody, the, the, the chest and body, but getting the axilla, the hands, and the head and neck, you know, often are the most soothing for, for anyone. Okay, what are things we should also look out for? What are positions that maybe people put, uh, such as, uh, obviously, it's never good to leave uh, anyone in a, a hot car. You know, many times, especially older people say, I'll stay in the car. No, don't run the car. You know, yeah. they're so frugal, you know, through time, they're going to cut it off and sit in the heat for it. So, and that's so, not a good idea. So I find that people will, they, they almost challenge themselves. They, it's always that saying, I'm only going to be gone for a few minutes. Well, I always say this, and, and if anybody in healthcare will tell you, never, ever, ever, never leave small children, elderly, pets yeah. in the car for any reason for any amount of time. If you're, you're going in the store and your car is off, if you have to let the pet out and walk them or something, do that. But it is not a good idea to try to anticipate how long it will take 
for you to, you know, start suffering for heat-related illnesses. I know, you you know, people, they've had their car doors, you know, the windows are up, the doors are closed, they come out, they open their door, they want to get in, and they can tell then. Most of the time in the summer is the time you open the door and you say, woo, and you want to go open the doors on both sides. So yeah. imagine being in that car with all of the doors and the windows closed and you had to sit in there. It doesn't take long. It takes minutes for your car to get hot enough to start causing, you know, illness and damage for you and your pets. Yeah, yeah. So we're affected by other things. Uh, say, for example, you get up in the morning, you're going to do the weekend warrior kind of thing. You're going to get out. You're either going to run. You're going to get some exercise. You drink some coffee. That's not a hydrant. So there are a few drinks that we love and we love to consume. Um, coffee, alcohol, especially like beer. And then one of my favorites, sweet tea. We're in the South. I love sweet tea. Um, they seem really refreshing to you, especially if they're cold, well, except the coffee. Yeah. But those particular drinks actually do more diuresis or act as diuretics. Mm -hmm. They're like taking your water pills. So they go in great, but they come out a lot more than they seem to go in. So it's not a good idea. Most people will think, hey, I had a few cold beers. Yeah, I had a couple go, glasses huh? of sweet tea. I'm great. Do they provide some hydration? Yes, but you will never keep up for the amount that you lose. Okay, so that's good advice. Always hydrate, right, doctor? And if you have any issues, of course, they can come to, to Fairview Park, especially when you get to that, that part where uh, you know that there's some issues mentally. Uh, you, you know, they're not quite coherent. Uh, you know that something's wrong. Better to be checked out because, uh, as you mentioned earlier, it could be uh, brain damage, heart damage, uh, other damage to your body, so you can get checked out uh, and make sure everything is right. So many people believe that as long as you're sweating, you're all right. But sometimes you can be a little sweaty, especially from exercise and things, and, and actually be entering that, that heat exhaustion. Um, and, and I mentioned that. I said, so part of the problem is because we sweat so much, to try to cool our bodies, that we lose the electrolytes, we we lose the salts, and, and what happens is that's the onset of the cramping and then the exhaustion. So you don't want to wait until you're confused or you have a fever or you can barely, you know, get up from the, the chair mm -hmm. or get out of the, you know, you're, you're on your lawnmower, whether it's a push or a riding, and you can barely walk across the grass. At that point, you've waited too long. So I mentioned there's, there's sweating, and then there's also that more clammy feeling. And when it's clammy feeling and not really sweat pouring, you've already crossed over, and you're starting down a really steep slope. All right. Great advice. We try to make the point very well to you because people push it, and they seem to push it every year uh, beyond their limits. So be safe, and remember you can always turn to Fairview Park Hospital Emergency Room if you need help. Thank you, Dr. Jasper. Thank you.